Are you familiar with the Turing test? The test proposed decades and decades ago to determine whether a machine is capable of human-like intelligence. Many people are, but there's a very common misconception about the original version of this test. In this paper published in 1950, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing proposed a game to help answer a version of the question, can machines think? A common description of that imitation game is that if a human judge is looking at a text-based interaction between a human and a machine, if the judge can't reliably tell who is the human and who is the machine, the machine has passed the test. And that is a reasonable description of what most people mean when they talk about the Turing test, but it was something slightly different as described in that paper. In Turing's imitation game, there are three players. Player A is a man, player B is a woman, and player C, the interrogator, can be anyone. The interrogator asks questions and gets back text-based responses and has to decide which is the man and which is the woman. Meanwhile, player A is trying to fool the interrogator into making the wrong choice. But what if player A were replaced by a computer? Turing says that whether player A can fool the interrogator just as often as a human replaces the original question, can machines think? So Turing was asking whether a machine could behave as intelligently as a human, but how does a human reason about what gender someone might be, especially in 1950? They rely on stereotypes and assumptions. I have to think of a talk I saw from roboticist Diana Howard, where she suggested that what Turing was really asking was, can a machine behave as biased as a human, which is so interesting in the context of how often AI reveals our own biases.